I love this thing. It flies great. Oh boy. Hello everyone. Today we invited a handsome guest to our program. He gave me the impression that he is very tall. In his video, you can always see his back with many beautiful flowers. He is our YouTube blogger, Chris Riley. Chris Riley, an old friend from the United States, often invalidates IPB accessories from other companies such as Maps and spends most of his time flying 3D IPB. We all have a good wish to create better drones for the public. How did you get started in FPV flying? What got you into this hobby? Honestly, F FPV videos. I uh, started watching them on YouTube. And uh, it just interested me. So I went out and got me a, a, a toy type drone, a Bugs B2C, and I started flying. How long have you been flying FPV? About five years. Like I say, five years ago I got a Bugs B2C. I started flying line of sight. I flew the Bugs for about a year. And then I started flying like three inch drones. And for, the, that, for that next year I flew mostly three inch drones. And then uh, the next two years I went from uh, three inch, kind of a mixture between three and five inch drones. And then uh, on the, the last year there, and I was flying normal acro during that time and on the last year I went to 3D flying so and mostly 5 inch drones. How did you know and get connected with MAPS? I got a friend named Bo uh, he was uh he told me about you guys and told me I should uh, email you and contact you and that's what I did and that's how I got hooked up with you guys uh, if Bo hadn't told me I'd have never even knew about you I had never heard of you before and uh it's just by accident, I guess, or by chance. Uh, Bo's a good friend of mine. And he saw an opportunity for me and he let me know. What MAPS products do you use and what's your opinion on them? Uh, so far I've used I've used a couple of mini 45 amp ESCs, uh, a mini flight controller, and some 2207 motors. Uh, so far, I'm loving everything. All the all the MEPS parts I've used so far are great. I got a bunch of more MEPS parts on the way I'll be reviewing shortly. Uh, and I got a whole bunch of other drones here I got to build. And so I'll probably be I'll probably be using a whole lot of MEPS parts, you know, over time. Actually, they're some of the best parts out there. I've, I've used a lot of parts, and so far the MEPS parts are holding up, you know, as good if not better than than a lot of the other name brands out there like T-Motor and uh, and Speedy B. So you can't go wrong, I don't think, with MEPS parts. Okay, could you introduce your FPV drones that you own? Okay. Well, this is going to take a while. We'll start with my little, little small ones. I've got the little uh, Beetle, I call it the Super Beetle. It's got an HD unit in it. It's a little two and a half inch drone. I love this little drone. It is the perfect yard flyer for when you just want to go out and fly around in your yard. This thing's amazing. It flies on 4S, and it's got HD. I mean, what more? What's not to like about it? Okay. I've got this little three and a half inch Manta, Axis Manta. I just built it the other day. I, I have recently took out the uh, air unit, though. I've only got so many air units, and so I don't have enough for all my drones. So I, I build my drones and get them ready to fly. And then when I want to fly one, I'll just take my air unit and camera in it. So this one's ready to go. I just took the air, camera and air unit out of it. Uh, it it's it's uh, like I say, it's a three and a half inch drone, and I'm running some uh, 2004 motors on it, 3600 kV. I've got this little three inch aluminum drone that I built. I, I don't have it. Uh, I don't have any of the parts in it yet. I'm in I'm in the process of getting new parts to go in it. Only thing I didn't make was this top plate. It's off another drone, but everything else, I, I, I cut it out of aluminum myself, hand made it, and it, it does great. I've got this one that I've started. It's 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 a uh, three and a half inch Rotorite skylight frame. This is a complete frame. I've just got the back arms up on the front with the front arms. See, I've doubled the arms. So I got some more arms ordered. I'm, I like to double all my arms on my frames so they don't break. The thicker you make it, the better. So I'll be building this one real soon. 
got a CL1 Vanny Style Edition rotor right frame. I've done the same thing. I took the back arms off, put them up on the front the front arm so it's double thick. Uh, this is a five inch drone. I'm building. I'm gonna be building it real soon. I'm not sure what this one's called. It's an old drone I had. Took all the parts out and it's just been sitting. I don't know if I'm gonna build it back or not. I've got this one here. This is a five inch uh, rooster, uh, Armor 10 rooster. Uh, I just need to put me some new parts in it, but I don't I don't have the parts yet for it. Now we'll go to the drones that's built and flying, and this is a uh, this is a Ken FPV AT6 all aluminum drone. I mean the whole drone is made out of aluminum. This is my basher quad. I know it looks rough, but it's because I bashed the crap out of it. Uh, it's a 4S quad running uh, 2207 uh, 2750 kV motors. Runs a GoPro up here, a little session, analog quad, and I bash the crap out of this thing. But it can take it. My next drone is this uh, tank, Rotorat tank. Uh, it's a 4S, uh, now this is a 6S quad now. And it's got some MEPS motors on it. The 2207 1750 kV motors. Uh, it's a little underpowered for 4S, and it's, it's, and it's just right for 6S. I've got some more motors coming for some, other, some more of these frames from MEPS, and they're going to be a little higher KV. Uh, this is this drone here is built completely out of MEPS parts, except for the VTX and the camera. Uh, I love this thing. It flies great. This one is the uh, this is the iFlight Nazgul 5. <clears throat> Uh, this is two frames. This is two complete frames made into one drone. I doubled everything on it. The top plates doubled, the bottom plates doubled, the sandwich plates doubled, the arms are doubled. I, I literally took two whole frames and just combined everything and made one frame out of it. And I lowered the deck and uh, it's pretty wicked. It's got 10 millimeter thick arms now and uh, four and, and four top millimeter and four bottom millimeter. It's actually closer to five. And uh, I've got 1750 flash hobby motors on it, and uh, 6S. And this has got a Avatar unit in it, or a, a, a Vista unit, not Avatar, Vista unit. And this is my Dimbot, the uh, Bot Grinder Dimbot frame. Uh, this has got uh, RCN Power Major Wasp 1860 kV motors, 6S. Uh, this thing's pretty much a tank too. It's got an air unit in it, HD system. Love this thing here. And I've got several more drones on the way. Uh, new frames, new parts coming from different places and things. Uh, different people sending me stuff. so. I've got several more three inches, several more five inches coming, so I gonna be a lot of stuff for me to be building. Which radio controller and goggles do you use? I use a, a Tyrannus QX7. Uh, this is one of the best radios ever made, I, in my opinion. Uh, I just don't have the range that you would like. Uh, you have to put a module in the back if you want to get better range. And this is the Jumper T16, very nice radio. That's the two radios I use. And when I'm running analog FPV, I'm using these uh, Eosheen goggles too. Uh, I've had these for years. They work great. Added me a little DVR up on the front here. They're 1080p capable goggles. Uh, and they got a little HD input over here, HDMI input. But, uh, you know, analog ain't that great. You get a lot of snow and break up in your goggles, so. But these is about the best option you could get at the time. And when I'm running HD, I'm using the, the DJI goggles. And either an air unit, original air unit, or a uh, Vista unit. Do you have any suggestion for beginners? Okay, my suggestions for beginners. Unless you got a lot of money, start out with analog, it's a whole lot cheaper. If you can go HD, go ahead and do it because you'll eventually get there. 
uh, HD will change your life. It really will. If you're used to analog and you go to HD, it's, it's like daylight and dark. Uh, almost any radio and goggles work. Just get a decent name brand something. And uh, the biggest suggestion I could make would be if you're getting into FPV, watch videos online, see what kind of flying you want to do. If you want to fly a line of sight, then start doing that. Get you a, some kind of a drone with altitude hold and whatnot and fly a line of sight. But if you plan on flying FPV like, like I do, and out here where you're doing tricks and fast maneuvers and you're wearing goggles, you don't want to start line of sight and you don't want to get a, you don't want to start with the altitude hold drone, in my opinion, uh, because it, it creates bad habits. Things, things you do on the controller and you're just used to flying a certain way, you'll get used to that and then it makes it harder when you go to FPV. If you'll just start out with goggles and flying FPV, best thing you can do is get a simulator and spend a couple of days on the simulator learning how to fly and then you shouldn't have no trouble picking up FPV and you won't have all the bad habits to break. Another thing if you're just beginning and starting out, don't buy cheap parts. Buy name brand parts. You'll end up in the long run spending a whole lot more money. Just like don't go out and buy a cheap ESC that maybe cost you $40 versus a $80 ESC. And the, the $40 ESC is some name you've never heard of. And the $80 ESC is a good name brand. That $80 ESC, I guarantee you, will outlast that $40 ESC. No name brand. The, the MOSFETs they use is just different and the first good hard crash you have you'll probably blow a MOSFET and so you've just wasted your money. Buy good parts. Maps.